Before fans had a chance to settle into their seats, a quick, stunning right, one that Liston and many others didn't see, ended the fight in round one. Bedlam and controversy erupted. Ferdy Pacheco. Ali had made Liston think he's crazy. That's exactly what Liston testified to. I've got a crazy guy up there. He's standing over me. I mean, if he got him back over to a neutral corner, I'll stand up and we'll keep on fighting. Nobody does. The referee doesn't continue the count. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't do, he does not do. Out of the audience comes Nat Fleischer, who's 90 years old, with a watch in his hand, and says, it's been 17 seconds since Sonny's done. In the meantime, while, while everybody's saying, what'd you say? They got up and they got started fighting again. Then he'd think, well, if it's been down 17 seconds, the fight must be over. So they stopped the fight and gave it to him. A carnival of mistakes. As do insinuations that Liston got hit with a phantom punch. The governor of Maine admitted he didn't see it, but countered that one of his party saw it with binoculars. High-powered jobs, undoubtedly. Oscar Fraley. Didn't I say you will have a shocking surprise? Didn't I say that if I tell you what's going to happen, you might not come? Didn't I say if I tell you what's going to happen and do it, the people may say it's a fake? Liston's friend, Lem Banker. Nobody saw the punch. It was a phantom punch. You couldn't knock Sonny down with a sledgehammer. He was one of the strongest human beings I've ever met. Lewiston resident, Bob Pacious. Oh, no way it was a phantom punch. It was, uh, it was a tremendous punch. He was hit hard, and he went down like a, uh, a felled ox. Writer, Jack McKinney. Anybody who watches the films today can see that that punch was not sufficient to knock down a lightweight, let alone a heavyweight. I hit him with a punch that Jack Johnson used called the anchor punch. Stephen Fetcher, the old great Hollywood movie star, as I told you, he's working with me. Anchor punch, and that's a sharp, how'd it, how'd it go step? Down, how'd you, how'd you say it? It's a sharp, just a sharp, crisp punch. What's the question? What happened? What happened? Got hit by a right hand. Where? Where? Wrong expression. Why on a cheekbone? The fight mob moved out of Poland Spring, Maine. Sweet air that maniacs breathe freshened again. Not so in Washington and Boston and Sacramento, where the politicians crown the public trough. Ban boxing, cried the statesmen. And the ones who cried the loudest were those who had been furthest from the scene, where Sonny Liston fell down. Red Smith. Lem Banker. After Sonny lost the title, we used to travel around, and one fellow recognized him, and he said, You're Sonny Liston, aren't you? Sonny always had a great sense of humor. He said, what happened up in Maine, Sonny? He says, three things went wrong. First of all, Robert Goulet forgot the words of the national anthem. Second, Jersey Joe Walcott, who was a referee, he, he lost track of the count. And he says, number three, I forgot to get up. The controversy surrounding the Lewiston fiasco marked the turning point in Ali's career. Earlier, as Cassius Clay, he had been viewed as a more or less innocuous class clown. Imagine a heavyweight who danced in white tassel shoes, spouted poetry, and poked fun at his opponents. Unheard of. But when he changed his name and his religion and denounced racism in America, some began to see him as dangerous. When he refused to go off to war in Vietnam, he was stripped of his title and barred from boxing. Joe Frazier was declared the interim title holder. And when those two unbeaten champions finally met in Madison Square Garden, it was truly the fight of the century. In this corner, Joe Frazier versus Muhammad Ali. Shrewd pre-fight publicity turned the billing into Frazier the Good Citizen versus Ali the Draft Dodger. Frazier, the simple Bible-reading Baptist, versus Ali, the slogan-sprouting black Muslim. Many people ask me, what will happen if you ever fight Joe Frazier? So I have a little poem. Frazier keeps talking, but there's not enough room. It's a matter of time. 
Valley lost the boom. Now he lands on the right. What a beautiful swing. And the punch lifts Frazier clean out of the ring. <laughs> Frazier still rising. And the referee was a frown. For he can't start counting till Frazier comes down. Now Frazier disappears from view. The crowd is getting frantic. But our radar stations have picked him up. He's somewhere over the Atlantic. <laughs> Who would have thought when they came to the fight that they would witness the launching of a color satellite? On March 8, 1971, Muhammad Ali would enter the ring against Joe Frazier in one of the most widely anticipated sporting events of the 20th century. The fight had been building for over three years. Ali had become still more controversial because of his refusal to be drafted. Vietnam veteran, Senator Bob Kerry. I mean, I remember conversations with friends in Vietnam, and our conclusion was that this man had courage. And he had taken a principled stand. And he wasn't angry at us, and didn't disrespect uh, what we were doing. He merely said that he wasn't going to do it. Uh, he took the consequences head on. We presumed, I think correctly, that he had the capacity to weasel his way out of it, like lots of people did. Lots of my friends did. Black people have died on foreign soil fighting in all of America's wars, still doing so. Writer, Jack McKinney. He was the man that stood up to the ultimate power in the world, the United States Joint Chiefs of Staff. If you recall his famous line, no Viet Cong ever called me nigger. That may have cost him a lot of points in public opinion in the United States, but it made him uh, a demigod internationally. Exiled from boxing in June of 1967, his championship stripped, Ali would not return for almost three and a half years. Ali's friend, Jim Brown. So when Ali came back, he more or less embraced people and enjoyed being Ali, enjoyed fighting again, and never was the same revolutionary, adamant kind of uh, speaker. And the Joe Frazier fight was probably going to be the most important fight of his life. For Joe Frazier, the fight would be the defining moment of his career. It was his opportunity to legitimize the vacated title he had won by knocking out Jimmy Ellis with the best left hook in boxing. Frazier's friend, Joe Hand. There's a reason why Joe Frazier had such a powerful left hook. Joe Frazier's father only had one arm. And when Joe was just a little boy down on the farm, his father would pick up things with his right hand, and Joe would have to pick them up with his left. So the power in Joe's left arm was there for when he was a little kid. Harry Markson, then the president of Madison Square Garden Boxing, remembers the initial offer to Frazier. I said to Yancey Durham, we are prepared to offer a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to your fighter. Now Joe Frazier was sitting at a desk with a yellow pad in front of him, and they started to light, and light, and light. And they discussed this for an unconscionably long time. Finally, I peeked over their shoulder, and I discovered that they just didn't know how to light a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They had one comma, two comma, five comma, zero comma, zero comma, zero comma. 